nuts. He loved so and not loved nuts so much. I can't say it, but he loved nuts so much that he grew trees of them in his own garden. And this story is not about him. All I will tell you is that he loved nuts enough that he left it in his will that he should be buried with, buried with a sack of his nuts at his feet. I know. <laughs> and he was rich enough that people actually did it. And he's gone from the story. Now in the same village, there was a miller in a white coat, as millers tend to wear. And one evening, the miller went to the dead man's garden to steal some nuts. When there, he ran into a good friend of his, a tailor in a black coat. And they declared plans. I'm going to steal some nuts. I'm going to steal a sheep. They decided to meet when they were done with their sheep and nut stealing on the church porch where they would share their spoils. And they went off in their separate directions. And the miller got there first. And they had a sack of nuts from the garden and began to sit there on the church porch cracking and eating the nuts. Now, the sexton of the church in that village was a crippled man. He could only walk on crutches. And he heard the sound of the cracking. And he hobbled along to the church porch to see what was going on. And he saw a figure, all in white, cracking and eating nuts. And he immediately knew what this was. It, of course, was the ghost of the dead rich man eating his nuts on the church porch. And he went running for the priest. And he told the priest, there was a ghost in the churchyard. He said, nonsense. We believe in devils. We don't believe in ghosts. The section said, no, there was a ghost there. The priest said, then take me. Show me this ghost of yours. And the section said, no, I can't go. I can't walk. And he threw away his questions. And the priest said, if you can't walk there, I will carry you there. And the priest picked up the sexton and began walking towards the church porch to see this man's ghost. Well, the miller, still sitting there in his white coat, cracking and eating nuts, got bored. And he started to be afraid that his friend, the tailor, had been arrested by the constable while stealing the sheep. So he thought it was best to flee home with his nuts. Now, after he left, the tailor in the black coat with his sheep on his shoulder arrived. And he sat down to wait for his friend. Along came the priest, carrying the sexton. And they saw, sitting on the church porch, a man dressed all in black, with something on his shoulders. And of course, the priest immediately knew the truth of it. It was the devil carrying away some poor departed soul. And he said, see, I told you there were devils, but not ghosts. And he threw down the sexton and ran. <laughs> and the sexton, when he hit the ground, was immediately cured and ran along with the priest and, in fact, passed him. The two of them kept running and were never seen in the village again. <laughs> <laughs> the tailor sat there in the black coat with his feet on his shoulder, and he knew what he'd just seen. That was his friend, the miller. And the miller was being chased by the constable. And it was time for him to leave, because the constable would be back. The miller, meanwhile, had gone to his home, where he was sitting inside, cracking and eating nuts. The tailor thought that it was bad that he'd abandoned his friend. He should see if he was doing all right. So he went to the miller's home, and he knocked on the front door and said, I have one of them, and he's tied by the legs, meaning, of course, the sheep. But the miller would then knew it was the constable who had the tailor tied by the legs. So he went running out the back door. The tailor heard the back door, ran around the house, and saw the miller heading off of his property past the mill stream, through the mill stream actually, and continuing running. Knowing that clearly the constable was in the house chasing him out, the tailor ran in the opposite direction. And some lessons were learned. We've learned that it's silly to fear a thing if you've seen no proof of it. And we have learned that while there is no proof of devils or ghosts, 
certainly a lot of people are afraid of them. And we've learned that while some people will run from the constable like the devil is chasing them, yet others will run from the devil like the constable, like the run from the devil like the constable is chasing them. <laughs> and sometimes if you let your mouth run dry, you never get the punchline right. <laughs>